Hulk Hogan and Titus O'Neil will be your co-hosts for WrestleMania this year. What a pairing that is. I think WWE may have used some kind of random generator to decide on who is going to host WrestleMania this year. And they came up with Hulk Hogan and Titus O'Neil. I will always have great respect for Titus, for that statement that he put out after Hogan's, what was supposed to be his mea culpa. This was, you know, Hogan's backstage blunder is more like it at Extreme Rules a few years ago where he addressed the locker room to apologize, quote-unquote apologize, for the racist shit that came out of his mouth on that tape. Or at least that was the idea. Hogan was going to try to get back in everybody's good graces. We're going to get the whole roster together. Hogan's going to stand up in front of everybody because he was trying to work his way back into the company. He had been gone for a few years, and he and the company felt, okay, we're going we're gonna to kind of ease him back into things. And the first order of business is let's gather the troops and Hogan will issue this this great apology. And some of the talent like New Day and Titus thought that it was less of an apology and it was more about him being the victim because his privacy was violated. And how you got to be careful. He gave this whole speech Hogan did apparently about how you got to be careful today, brother, because people will record you without your consent. That's what the speech turned into. Not exactly the message they wanted him to deliver. I'm sorry I got caught, brother. Yeah, so anyway, that didn't go over too well. But Titus, to his credit, put out a very classy statement that he did not feel like Hogan showed true remorse for what he had done. But he still felt that Hogan deserved to be reinstated. He was in favor of Hogan coming back and being reinstated into the company, into the family. And he said that hopefully Terry will use his image for good going forward. Some good can come out of this. And he talked about, you know, himself being a role model for his two sons, who he obviously loves very much. He always talks about them. And Titus is a credit to that company. You know, he could talk about him tripping and falling under the ring at the, at the greatest Royal Rumble and the fact that, you know, he's not a big, big star or anything like that. He's, he's not... You know, he's not anybody who was ever really used in any kind of meaningful role on television, but he is still a credit to that company. And they are, I think, better off for having someone like Titus O'Neil under contract who they can use as a spokesman and as an ambassador for any number of things in this company. You know, the work that he does. Hogan, Hogan is a parody at this point. That, that's really what he is. All right, nobody is disputing Hogan's place in history. I'll be the first person to tell you there's no bigger star in history than Hulk Hogan. The guy's on the Mount Rushmore, Hall of Fame, all that stuff, right? I might not be sitting here talking about wrestling right now were it not for me coming up at a time when Hulkamania was running wild, dude. All right, so we give Hogan his just desserts. Absolutely. We can talk about that all day long, but the fact is Hogan is a parody. He's a parody of himself at this point. We, we've seen him come back. It's the same shtick. It's the same fucking routine every single time. He's already hosted WrestleMania a couple of times. Even the year Alexa Bliss was the host, right? She brought him out. He basically hosted that WrestleMania too. Not just the one where he flubbed uh, the whole Silver Dome and... Uh, Silver Dome and... and uh, uh, oh God, now I'm flubbing. What was the name of the building in New Orleans? The Superdome. I forgot the name. So we've already seen him in this role before. Now they're bringing him back again because it's Tampa. He's a Tampa resident. That's where he lives. He's already going into the Hall of Fame, right? They're doing. They're running the inductions for the last uh, crew of people this year as well, I believe. Although now there's some question about whether Batista is going to be there. So I don't really see the point in putting him back in this role again. I don't really have any use for him in this role. But good for Titus, you know, at least for for being given something to do. I still think this whole hosting WrestleMania stuff is just completely pointless. But it, it's harmless enough. Good for Titus. He'll have a role on the show this year. Some other Raw-related notes. The New Day beat the Hurt Business to become the new Raw Tag Team Champions, making them 11-time tag champs. They were immediately challenged by AJ Styles and Omas to a tag team title match at WrestleMania, which New Day accepted. So now it makes sense why they felt they had to get the belts off Shelton and Cedric. They wanted it on a pair of babyfaces, it seems like to me. 
Who will have the better tag team debut? Shaq or Omas? I'm thinking Shaq. Shaq, Shaq was, uh, he was more impressive than I thought he would be. Shaq is also a lot older than Omas. But that is a question I put to all of you. Who do you think will have the better tag team debut? I I'll say this much. Omas certainly has a more experienced tag team partner than Shaq did on Dynamite. Although I thought both of them did very well. Raw Women's Champion Asuka made her return to the ring on Monday night, beating Shayna Baszler after Baszler kicked her in the face and knocked out some of her teeth a few weeks ago. Asuka posted a message on a an app that is a, a Japanese social networking app revealing that the teeth that she has in her mouth right now are temporary. It takes six months. It's going to take six months for her injury to fully heal, after which she will have implants in her mouth to replace the teeth that were knocked out. So that was a hell of a shot. I mean, this was more than just a kick that, you know, kind of grazed her or just, yeah, just quickly caught her in the face, knocked the tooth out. I mean, this sounds like a pretty extensive work that this woman has to have now on her mouth. Charlotte Flair was not on the show Monday night, and interestingly, she has been removed from the latest WrestleMania poster that was sent out. She was replaced by Bad Bunny. And on top of that, they have since announced that Rhea Ripley will finally make her Raw debut tomorrow night. They are not debuting Rhea Ripley on Raw now, unless she is going to be on the WrestleMania card. This is usually a time of year they don't debut anybody new. They usually hold off until after Mania, the night after Mania. The fact that she's going to be debuting the night after Fastlane and there's still three weeks to go until WrestleMania, that coupled with the state of this Raw women's division right now, there's no way that Rhea Ripley is not going to find her way onto the WrestleMania card. And if Charlotte is off of WrestleMania, and I'm not saying she is, I actually I find it impossible, unless there is an injury involved, I find it impossible to think, and I, I heard this stuff about her scoring, is it a film role or a TV role of some kind? She's, she's, she's trying to make her way in Hollywood, it seems. But I just find it impossible to believe that she would be off the WrestleMania card, so I think she'll be on there. But let's say she is. Let's say she, she is off the show. Asuka versus Rhea Ripley is the only match that they should be thinking about. And if Charlotte is involved, then it should be a triple threat with Asuka, Rhea, and Charlotte for the Raw Women's Championship. Would it be rushed, putting her in a title match right away? Yes, it would be. It would be rushed. But she should have been on television within a few weeks of the Royal Rumble. She should have been on television the night after the Royal Rumble. When she came in second, she was the runner-up with Bianca Belair winning in that Women's Royal Rumble match. They both had a great showing. Rhea was in there for a long time. And then she just disappeared. She just vanished. You could have put her on TV and given her some squash matches. You could have had her made a few appearances, but she just disappeared. That's on them. That's the only reason this feels so rushed. This wouldn't feel so rushed if she had been on television from the night after the Royal Rumble. They have elected to debut her the night after Fastlane. Rushed as it may be. There is no other match outside of just doing another Oscar Charlotte match, which we've seen before. There is no one else that makes sense here. Rhea hasn't even debuted yet, and she's already a bigger star than any of the other women on that brand. Outside of, of Charlotte, and I guess you could say Asuka, she's the biggest name. Not only was Charlotte not at Raw, neither was Andrade who has not been on television since October and was said to look miserable backstage at Raw last Monday, uh, the week before. On Twitter, he confirmed reports that he has asked for his WWE release, saying the rumors are true, and I don't know what the future holds, but I want to make my dreams come true. Thank you for giving me so much support these last days. Again, the latest reports are that his request for a release was denied and that Charlotte had pitched an idea for her and Andrade to be paired up on television as an act and that idea was also rejected. 
I pitched that very same idea months ago here on this podcast. I think it could have worked. It would have been great for Andrade because you know that Charlotte is going to get a ton of TV time. So just being associated with her, he would benefit from that. But that's the point, isn't it? Isn't that the point? They don't want him to benefit. I'm not saying they're actively trying to sabotage him. I I don't believe that. I don't believe that anybody in that company hates him or is actively trying to ruin his career. I think most of the time that's not the case. Sometimes it might be. You make some enemies, you piss off Bruce or somebody behind the scenes, you make, you know, you make enemies with the wrong person and things can go south for you real quick. I don't even think that's the case with Andrade. I really don't. I think the the whole point is they don't want him to benefit because if they did, they would put the man on TV and do something with him. But this is what people don't understand. We can sit here and pitch ideas all day long that we think are so obvious. Oh my God, this is such a great idea. It's so obvious. How come they don't do it? How come they don't see it? How come they don't see our our vision? They do. They do see it. They just don't want to do it because they have their people that they push. Those people are the priority for them. The other people, they're just not important enough. They don't see the same value in them. So they don't value them. They don't prioritize them. And they fall to the wayside. That's why you have people who end up sitting and catering and I just imagine what they must be thinking. They're sitting there every week, and it's as if they don't even exist. They're drawing a paycheck. They're traveling from town to town, city to city. But it's as if they don't exist. People probably walk back and forth, ride by them, don't even know they're there. And you wonder why people get so frustrated that even though they might be making pretty good money, they just want out. It's like a nightmare for them. Because they just want to go somewhere where they can work. And they can feel they're contributing. They can feel they they can feel fulfilled in some way, and not waste away the prime years of their fi- of their, their their physical prime, their prime earning years, wasted away. Any name recognition and name value they may have had coming into the company, day by day, week by week, month by month, year by year, decreasing, getting less and less. You can understand the frustration. Andrade obviously falls into that category. He's not someone they have an interest in pushing. So yeah, I think he and Charlotte together could have worked. They could have become a uh, a dynamic duo on TV. And maybe he wouldn't have had to cut as many promos himself. When they would show up on TV, Charlotte could do most of the talking. But he's not a priority for them. Charlotte is the priority. Andrade is not. So not even the great Charlotte Flair could save her Latin lover boy. That's why he wants out. There's another former NXT champion who I mentioned a few minutes ago. Another one you may have forgotten because he has he's nowhere to be found. Keith Lee continues to be MIA. Not on social media, though. He posted on Thursday, I hear many of you. I see the many messages. One day I will explain it all for the ones true to me. For now, know that I more than appreciate the continued support. And when I return, it will be filled with all the love I have for those that represent the hashtag Legion. Per PW Insider, Keith Lee is not currently factored into any future company plans. So I don't know what's going on, if it's health related or not. But I hope he's okay, and it gets all sorted out very quickly. You look at the last five or six men, I was thinking about this, you look at the last, like, half dozen NXT champions that have been called down to the main roster, and boy, it does not paint a very positive picture. I mean, we kind of already knew that, but when you really look at the names, it puts things in context. Drew McIntyre is clearly the biggest success story of the bunch. And Nakamura got a decent push for a while. Look, he he came in, he had a WrestleMania match with AJ Styles. Like, right out of the gate, he got a push. Didn't last that long, but initially he got a push. But we're talking, what are we talking now, five years? Four years. No, no, five. Actually, I I believe it's five. Yeah, five years ago. That's a long time. That's a lifetime. I mean, how decent of a push was it, really? When you think about it, 
but let's let's put him in the category of of mild success even though i think a lot of people would would dispute that okay take take him and drew and put them on the side and what are you left with right got nakamura you got bobby rude alistair black andrade who just asked for his release which tells you how that's going and now keith lee who can't seem to ever catch a break you can see why it doesn't inspire a lot of confidence when someone gets the call to Raw or SmackDown, which is what worries me about Rhea Ripley. And Charlie Caruso appears to be done with WWE, with her contract said to be expiring soon. Even Paul Heyman made a crack about it on Talking Smack, went up on the network this weekend. He was uh, He's always healing on Kayla Braxton, who hosts talking smack and he looked into the camera and said we let go what do you say we let go of the wrong announce lady or something like that kayla just put her head in her hands she's already been taken off television has uh, charlie caruso and been replaced on backstage interviews and on raw talk she was the host of raw talk and she hasn't hosted raw talk in a few weeks she's been replaced by their new irish announcer kevin patrick I believe one of her last appearances on TV, maybe it was her last. I don't think it was her last. I think she may have appeared a few times after that, but one of her last appearances on TV was that Raw Talk episode from last month where she joked that she liked DP, which was supposed to be a reference to Damian Priest. Our truth was uh, talking to Damian Priest. He called him DP. And Charlie just butts into their conversation and goes, DP, I like that. DP, I like it. It has a nice ring to it. DP. She kept repeating it over and over again. That's all she kept saying was DP, DP. I like DP. <laughs> it's like, I mean, the name of the show is Raw Talk. So, I mean, I guess it kind of fits. Actually, I think that might have been the same night that Nia Jax was screaming about her hole. Now it all makes sense. Fightful Select chimed in. They had a report suggesting that she may have had backstage heat for being late to several backstage interviews that she was scheduled to do at uh, various Raw shows, including specific instances with Randy Orton and with Sheamus. And uh, Vince McMahon, I guess, did not take too kindly to that. So in any event, she's done. No more Charlie Caruso. I mean, she'll be fine. She works for ESPN. And uh, makes appearances on their first take show. I think she's been doing that now for a couple of years. So it looks like uh, another one bites the dust when it comes to the backstage interview people in WWE.